Why does it always do that? I don't understand why it doesn't just show up the game, like, right away. I wonder if I have to do, like, a buffer or something. That actually shows the game when it's loading in. What's everyone doing tonight? Ah, yes, I forgot. Host door trauma. Oh, boy. I don't know why my arm hurts. What's going on with that? So I do remember last time uh, we tried opening up the door and we actually got a one more door thing. And I really, really want to open that door. Uh, what did we got something done? Watermarks. Uh, how's the volume, by the way? I just want to make sure. I messed with volume earlier today. And it sounded alright in terms of recording, but I want to make sure it sounds alright streaming. It's admittedly, hard to test streams compared to recordings. Uh, first off, though, we gotta, gotta level up a bit. Uh, if I remember right, uh, Kim recommended we go check out the goons over in the tent over yonder. So I think we'll probably check those out first. Uh, mess with something real quick. Nah, that should be enough. Uh, before talking to them, though, let us talk to Larissa's. Shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties. Was that the game or was that my audio? Cause that that freaked me out for a second. Was that I'm hoping that crackling was the game. Uh hearing you approach, she looks oh, up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here. She's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Everyone you knows drugs makes you invulnerable to cold. You bet this one likes to party. Dear child, it's freezing. Where is your hat? <sighs> she looks up to you, distracted. I said you should have a hat on. So should you. Uh, I heard it, so I assume it's a game. Hey, Manji. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to do anything. I am the law. You have to do what the law says. Come and think of it, I should. Where do I get one around here? I don't know. Some kind of store? Maybe a general store. Look, man, fuck the hat. <laughs> why do we get. I don't even know why we got our ass that hat. What did she just say? That's not how a civilian is supposed to address an officer of the law. Oh my god. <laughs> Starting it off strong. Yeah! <laughs> Your eyes are fixed on her as everything gets very still. Dangerously so. Oh my god, we're already doing this. Excuse me, what did you just say? <laughs> she looks down, pretending to be busy with the device. Make her meet your eyes. Kid is an arrogant. She's afraid to look you in the eye. You already put her in her place. <laughs> what the? Why are we? We're literally about to be just a big ol' asshole right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know which one I want to pick. I want to be an a-hole, but this just... I, I don't want to be an asshole, but I feel like no matter what I do here... Oh, I'm gonna be a dick. Kicks the snow into her face with the food. You do not just speak to like that to the police. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. I was just trying to concentrate on this thing here, and I'm sorry I said that. My dad swears, my boyfriend swears, my whole family does. I I've caught the habit. I didn't mean to. And I'm sorry. She looks up with pained expression. Her face caked with a thick layer of makeup. With her left hand, she's wiping some of it off to get the snow out of her face. Now I have some questions for you. Yeah, authority is kind of a dick. Okay. Um. What's your name? A, a, a seal? Seal who? I'm not a young suitor. This is official police business. Okay. Well, it's Burger. Very common name. You have little reason to doubt that's her real name. But she's not at all surprised by this cop show questioning, is she? 
What's that device you got there? This? She breathes on her freezing fingers. It's a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic records sounds from inside things. Like this ice. Your mango brain would like to know how there is a like to know there is a boxer called contact mic. What? What? What does that have to do with anything? What am I supposed to do with this? No No idea. Does it have anything to do with contact mic? Uh she's confused. Yeah, I record stuff like that. No, I mean the boxer contact mic. Ah, uh, no. This is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact mic just beats people up. You know, contact mic doesn't just beat people up. Contact mic is a role model. Um. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? What? This is how we're starting the stream off. Okay. Yes, yeah, so let's just go into how Contact Mike is a role, uh, the role off, uh, the, the role model. Yes, you try, you heard right. You should try to be like more like Contact Mike, a successful athlete and an inspirational figure who's overcome social, physical, and mental obstacles. On second thought, screw Contact Mike. He's not a champion. You are. Look at you out here in front of a saggy tent, picking your nose to drug addict music. Well, sports is all of your faith and dedication. Oh my. We're, we're just we're just, just being a total fucking asshole right now. Not sure which one I want to pick. Both of these are pretty good. Mm. Fuck, both of these are pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna do this one. Man, you're one weird cop. This isn't about me. This is about your lack of respect for one one of boxing great. And for greats, and for yourself. What is with you and this mic guy? She pauses. The question is rhetorical. The litany of con- Oh my god. Okay, if you your vote, I'll be more like contact Mike and less like me. Self-respect's not meant to float any boats but your own. I'll keep that in mind for future use. She turns to check her tape recorder. How does that thing work? The, the mic? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The box said it only picks up structure-borne sound. If you like techno babble. Where'd you get that mic from? Same place I got the recorder from. The Polisium. What's the Polisium? Oh man, you haven't been to Polisium? She forgets herself for a moment. It's the coolest place in this whole drug addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop. On Boogie Streak and Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno von Ick. Thinking about it really cheers her up. Long way from here, though. I am not saying that bottom one. Who's this Arno guy? Oh yeah, she looks so. He looks you over, assessing your age. Guessing you wouldn't know von Ick, or really be a Halizian going kind of guy. I get down. I. I don't know what that means. Oh god. I grind. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore these. I don't know what that means either. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck is this? What is happening? It means I'm hitting me on my ears. Nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I that I rock. In the form of a wrecked tape player and a completely trashed hostel room. There do I actually. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Get down, grind. I'm gonna do this one. That's cool. She breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right. Time has deserted me. <laughs> we just <laughs> we just took we just took damage for that. Stupid. Actually, I had some non-mic questions for you. Uh, what are you doing? 
<laughs> what are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. And what is it you're recording exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice, but there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. I'm not sure how well that will sound. Just scratch your forehead. Wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things. Stuff you need for life. A lie. They're probably pawned off or something. Suspicious. And what are these recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps? The musicians at Palisium use them for making music. They loop the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of the cracks in the ice and the keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Which is not. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be like a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. Who looks at the recording, guys? Things she thought would fill her with hours of joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty, empty fantasy. She feels childish. Very useless all of a sudden. Take this. You're cold. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No, man. Fuck that. I'm cool. I'm sorry I've said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. The lieutenant backs up. He throws you a glance. Now this is where... <laughs> this is where a hat would come in handy. Yeah, maybe you were right about the hat. You said it's supposed to be a music place? What is? That. She nods towards the church. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisium or something. Stupid. It's really... She pauses. It's not going to be a Palisium, that's for sure. The boys? Yeah, Andre and the guys. They're inside. In the tent. And why is that? Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff like what? Music stuff, mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. And there's piles of it. You mean like those headphones your boyfriend sold? Yep. She squints her eyes a little. They were pretty. Sorry we sold those. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to free you? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. More like contact Mike now. You seem surprisingly comfortable being questioned. Why is that? Well, it's just questioning, right? You're questioning me. It's what cops do. All this over a hat. Fast and clean, a good one. Can't say it's a lie, but it feels like one. It's better at lying than, like, than she'd like everyone to know. Have you been questioned before? Once or twice, yeah. I'm sorry I haven't had the Revishol experience. They get east of the river. So what job have you, uh, what job have you gotten into with the police? Usual. I had a shitty run as a teenager. The usual. You know, drinking, getting into fights. The ugly stuff that happens when you move out of your parents' place at 13 in Fallberg. Interesting term! Time to glean some knowledge! Why'd you need to move at such a tender age? My dad was a drunk. Plus, I guess I wanted to drink too, you know? Get my party on. Oh, well, I think you must really learn some of those times and questions. Your life's been pretty good. Uh, drinking, partying, and this music are bad for you. Shaking this morning, example. You know what? I think you've learned some things. Yeah. Um, thank you. This girl is truly proud of herself. Yes, I can't remember how many you pulled or which ones I picked up on. Now, another question. Uh, go ahead. Alright, uh, I'm gonna save then. I, I'm pretty confident we can do a 72. But knowing my luck, and somehow getting a 3%, and then failing, what was it, at 80? I know again. There we go. The device is still warm from her touch, as heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo, Omicron, adorns a yellow plastic cover. Inside, the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device on your hand. I'm sorry you have to sit here on the ice feeling miserable. At your age, or any age, in this weather, 
waiting for it to get dark. She looks you in your eye. You, you in your eye? What? Uh, she looks you in your eye, her eye pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. People who built this world intended to be better for you, but they failed. It's easier to live in their failure with this by your side. The wind howls. She remains silent. It's real. Tell her. It's not a childish fantasy. It could be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. What is... <laughs> Why are we so obsessed with this dude? Oh my lord. The, the Tales of the Adventure of Contact Mike, everybody. That's what this is going to be. I'm once again reminded of how Contact Mike rose from the slums of St. Petit's to the top of the boxing world, overcoming adversity and serious brain trauma. Nothing is coming. Nothing he wouldn't knock out in three rounds. The real fight is for the right attitude. I can't believe this. Let's <laughs> do another Mike thing! Fine, okay, I'll stick to it. Today's the night screen plays in their lap. I'll knock it out in three rounds. Oh my god. Do I? There's little you can do to help her now. But given the chance you feel like you should, there is something about her. A wait, a waitness. I'm assuming? After a moment of silence, she speaks again. So, thanks, I guess, for the psych session. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? He said eating me. It's not eating me. Come on, I can tell. She shakes her head slowly. But, okay, be a boy Darrow about it if you want to. I guess there is something that's been making my life hell. What is? What is? What is it? She listens intently. Wow, this is not at all where I thought we were going with this. Apparently we're going to politics again. Huh. Uh. I did not think this through at all. This is not even remotely where I thought we were going with this. Oh. Uh. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> I think it's the play, play of the working class? Oh, really? The golem of capital runs rampant, smashing creator and slave alike. I fear the process is irreversible. Wow, social justice really matters that much to you. That's commendable. It really had you shaken up there. Are you sure that's it, though? Yeah, I was like, we could have talked about our missing girlfriend, our, our our amnesia, all the things we could have possibly done while we were uh, from our forgotten memories. No, let's talk about politics. Like, what? What? I haven't seen much of this world, but what I've seen, social justice is an adolescent term. It's the most liberal. What's got me shaken up is the people's struggle, and it's got me shaken up bad. Yeah, man, they're pretty bad. She says, without much conviction. Makes me sick, thinking about the thousands, millions, billions. How many people are there, actually? Um, how many people are there in the world? 3.6 billion. Not to counting those in CL. Really? That many? Here's to me the tears, thinking of all the 3.6 billion, and God knows how many of them are in that CL place. Crushed under the tyranny of the market. About it, so we're talking politics, I'm missing facial hair. So this is another point to influence your political stance. Good evening. Hey, Red, how you doing? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Are you sure you're not just hung up on some chick, though? I'm positive. I have some questions for you for all this started. Oh my god. What a waste of, what a waste of time. My goodness. Uh... Alright, let's... Uh, we should probably head to... Apartment 28. And see if our buddy's there. Can I just teleport? 
Ugh, I don't want to walk all the way back. That's what you get for getting snow on your face. I have to walk all the way back. That's my <laughs> That's my punishment for kicking snow in her face. I have to walk all the way back. Oh, I think I just... <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> oh. Sorry, I'm like choking on something. I don't know if it's twist the tea or what. We have 57 real, we're too broke. Oh, cop cannot afford public transportation. We walk. Oh, hello. Oh, nothing important. Because we get to... <clears throat> wow, I... My throat keeps getting like clawed. I feel like something's in my throat, but I can't tell. Because I feel it tickling it. <coughs> anyway. Uh, we use boombox. We can't waste money on buses. Wait, what? But without actual rot. Excuse me? Okay, I guess we'll just ignore that. I'm getting a little bit of screen tearing. I don't know if anyone's noticing that, but I have that. I've been noticing that for a while now. Can I still... Can I do this yet? Eh. Yeah. Yeah, we can probably try it now. You're gonna fail. Wow, thank you for that lovely perking speech. I fucking hate you, Manji. <laughs> God. <laughs> God damn it. That was on purpose. One more time and then I'm, I'm just gonna move on. God damn it. You have no clue. It's just a wall. God. Ugh. Put me that one on you. That one's all on you. Wow, why does it feel like my flashlight was switched out? Yeah, it's just a wall. Don't worry about it. I am very curious why, like... It's such a hard thing for conceptualization when conceptualization is one of my highest stats. Like, it's it's seven. Like, it's my one of my second highest ones with wow, authority's that high. Holy shit! Like, how how what how important is that wall? That it's such a high stat, a high check. <clears throat> Like, that's what has me genuinely curious about that. Here, just in traffic. Nice city, Wow, we are literally a minute early. <clears throat> oh, pfft. Hi. Jean de Marie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another try for his cigarette. <clears throat> His slender figure is backlit by city lights. It's distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. Feels like a Friday. Seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. We got your hint. Found the key right under that stone. Beautiful. He replies, smiling. As he... Oh my god, stop it. As he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Wait, what? Uh, that's what I'm aiming for, yes? Honestly, I'm just trying not to screw anything up. I'm not gonna make it right. I'm gonna make things spectacular. Beautiful. And here I street. Why does he sound like Toe Jam? Am I the only one who feels like he sounds like Toe Jam's Eco VA? 
Mirror Street Lane cast shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheek lights. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. Why does this sound like I Bill told him PA? about you, and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Sounds like Toe Jam's VA, and that makes me very mad. <clears throat> Is it Friday today? It feels like Friday. Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Even the rain feels nice. He leans over the rain. <clears throat> what? <clears throat> what is caught in my throat? It is bothering me. It's like tickling my throat and it's making me cough every couple of minutes. <clears throat> uh, by the way, I'm really digging the view here. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. He looks away. Cigarette and glowing in the dark. Morinay is special, isn't it? Wait, suddenly you're digging things? Lieutenant whispers to you, shaking his head. Very well, I'll talk to him. First, I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark, and the neighboring windows have lit up by one by one. Besides, I've got to run. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. I don't know why that line makes me smile a little bit. That's sad. But I just found you again. Just look at it. He gestures towards the distant motorway, all leading to Golden Ditla Delta. It's a beautiful night. Who's going to stay in on a night like this? He's right. Only losers go to bed early. Time to break out the booze. It is not Toe Jam's VA. I don't know why he just sounded like to he just sounded like Toe Jam for like a millisecond. I don't know why it bothered me. Man on high heel stumbles out into a basement club. Music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly as the chemicals his nervous system a thousand thousand shivers ripple through his body. Only if we promise we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the Lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. We'll talk. Smoker assures you, brushing his hand through the hair. Just not tonight. Take care, alright. He says with another disarming smile before slipping off into the night. Are we really gonna watch him leave the building? Oh my god. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. <clears throat> There's something different about him that I can't put my finger on. Different, of course. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? He's such a good listener. I like talking to him. There's nothing so mysterious about the way he moves and talks and moves. He smells good. Why on earth does he <laughs> smell so good? What the fuck? Okay, I can't decide. Do we want to do the first one or the fourth one? It's going to be one of those. Which one are we picking? Because I can't decide between these two. They're both just disgustingly good, and I love it. <laughs> Holy shit, Byakuya Bia faked the death by hanging a body up, and our victim was hanged? Coincidence? Also, one. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? His shirt. <laughs> then it squints his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. His shirt. His shirt. What the fuck is happening? He's trying to dive deep into the mysteries of his sh shirt. His shirt. How many times am I going to say his shirt? His shirt. <laughs> no, I don't want to know why his shirt is always unbuttoned. His mouth tightens as I'm trying to hold something back. Come on, detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? God, he knocks in the apartment door for you. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my lord. <laughs> it's just on number one, right? Early business magazine. Party Dragon Silk Robe. Oh, 
same apartment. Dated year 01. If I get a paint on older, ah, I'm just gonna raid your house first. Samurai comical hat. With a canopy made of bed made of metal. Wow, that sounds really uncomfortable. It's just soaked up in a pot. Empty ashtray. None of this is weird. Flies for underground parties. Hold up. I wanna see what this looks like on us. Ah, uh, plus we found the electric chemistry. Something this uh this jacket. Oh my god. What the fuck is this? Is it glitching through the thing or is that on purpose? Oh, ew, 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 no. Someone knows those walking, so I think I would say, well, watch someone raid a room. What was our thing we were wearing? I think we were wearing the pinball maker's coat. Uh, drama and electric chemistry is not bad, but we're trying to focus mostly on, uh... Actually, should I go back to RCM Commander's jacket? Really ugly looking, though. I guess it's really the only one that really fits with us, huh? Um... Part of me doesn't know. Like, do I, I think like, I want to keep this on just because I like how it looks. I still don't. I still don't want to get rid of the <laughs> the greaves. I will find the rest of this armor, by the way. I'm still determined on that. All right, let's save and then we'll start talking to the guy. Even though it's a Thursday. Officers of the Revachel Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. Shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason you feel this man is your superior. Superior? He's not in the command chain. My name is Charles Villedron. I am an official with the coalition government. I work for oh. the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sir Leclerc. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good, super. I'm here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Excuse me? Wait, do you mean to tell me this guy is a, not a police officer, but, like, a government official? Hanging? What a drag. Seems like a culture gentleman. You should ask him about the finger, the finer things. <laughs> oh my god. Before we get to that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from. Oh, we got it from an atelier in the East Delta Commerce Center. Personally, I think it's a little culturally insensitive, but the material is great. Sadly, the shop is now out of business. That's really all I can tell you about it. <laughs> he forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods for you to proceed. What's an official like you doing in Marne? The coalition is only woke looking out for the price stabilité. He raises his index finger. Inflation is like a killer. Like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international... Inter... Bleh. Uh, which is why, I requi why it requires international oversight. So you're some kind of bureaucrat. Yes, as I said before, I am a commissioner from Sir Laclef Sir working for the Institute of Price Stabilité. He glances at his watch. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Intern. Wait, there's an actually an Institute of Price Stabilité, is there? Or maybe it there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Intern is joking or not. Oh, shoot a government man. Do no oh, I just got the joke. I don't know why I just got that. <laughs> you two have a... 
Uh, okay, what are you doing here in the compartment? Uh, what are you doing here in this apartment? Uh, well, I am renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. He smiles. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. Well, what is this international community? La Comunità Internationale is what Revolutionians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nation that stopped the disaster of the revolution. Uh, what is Moral Intern? Is the international organization for moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Are you a moralist? But of course! But why? Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. Turn, turn to Kim! Lieutenant, are you a moralist? Hmm? I, uh... I'm a lieutenant of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining law and order in Revachol. A very moralist answer. The man nods. Eh, what is a normal, stable world? The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier sur la cliff. Oranier seems to be very normal. Doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Montenay? No. Montenay is something else. What about the rest of Revachol? Is it part of the normal world? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it just hasn't yet full achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well, relatively speaking. It gives you an approving nod. Oh, what about moralist? Moralist I'm tired. Oh, he's using my sham. Oh, it's like every time I talk to people, I'm choosing option D. None of the above. Is that moralism? Is this option D usually the most reasonable answer? Yes, everything else is super extreme. It's like living with a bunch of lunatics. Lamp, are you a moralist? I have no idea what that term reply refers to, so I have no idea. That goes above my head for right now. Sounds like you're a moralist indeed, my friend. Welcome. Moralism is all about compromise and achieving the achievable. It's pragmatic, realistic, and level-headed. An ideology for doers. Are you a doer, my friend? It looks like to me you are. And now enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there something else you wanted to ask? Okay, I'll put you down as not a moralist. Oh my lord. Alright, we're gonna skip about, we're gonna skip talking politics with him. You actually witnessed the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. The man gives a solemn nod. He didn't see the hanging. He just saw a little show staged by the Hardys. Let him talk. He may know more than he even he knows. Ooh, so this actually makes sense. Since we know the Hardy Boys didn't actually kill him and they even admitted it to such, they just staged the hanging. This guy might shoot himself in the foot by saying, like, oh yeah, it was those Hardy Boys. They're they're the killers, officer. You should go arrest them and blah 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 blah. So I'm wondering how this uh, conversation went would hang would uh look if we didn't know that already. If we still believe the uh, Hardy Boys were the killers. Start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it was very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher setting the scene. The lieutenant is already scribbling down notes. What do you mean, like in a play? It was so strange, I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead one by one. That's when I understood I should not be seeing this. Lieutenant nods to you. That lines up with previous testimony, doesn't it? Well done, detective. Thank you, sir. I think we got the picture. Anything else stand out? Only that there were about eight or ten. I couldn't make out anything. It was so dark. And that it was quiet. He says, smoothing his hair. Quietest lynching I ever heard of. Let alone heard. But I suspect you knew that already. I can't say I'm surprised. The fine reputation of the men and women that in the RCM is well deserved. Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future from his into his own hands and that's all that matters. 
Uh, how did you even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the Insulinian Isola. Oil platforms ablaze in the night, civil wars lasting for years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. Wait, what? Yeah, what are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. Oh, contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are, meeting the people they meet. That's how I came here, and my friend, too. Uh, you haven't told me who he is. Sorry, who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend? The smoker on the balcony? We were just talking about him? But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is the cornerstone of our- Okay, he is definitely a politician because he doesn't fucking answer the question. Oh my lord, I already hate you. Okay, fine, but what's his name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I am sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. He is deeply enmeshed in the study of fine arts, yes. As though you weren't envious enough of the boy as is. Which arts? He's a truly spiritual spirit. Hi. Yes, hi. I am Packet, not your FBI agent. Please tell me how you feel about politicians. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design or printmaking? Who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. What are you doing in this apartment by yourself? I am just enjoying the view. The man smiles, nodding to the window. Uh, what view? It's dark outside. Listen, he says, raising his hand. What? I'm not hearing anything. The Insulindian Bay. Uh, I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. A oh, busy bee? What an odd choice of words. <laughs> what the f is happening? What are you two doing? A moment, officer. Do you have everything you'll need for me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Uh, hold on. Why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. He pauses, and I am pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be loitering around in unprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Oh shit, did we enter this, uh... Did we enter this room a little too soon? I'm not going anywhere. I just want to take a look around the apartment. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful place. He glances at his watch. Let me know if you have any further questions. What's this? We're getting a report of normal, reasonable, temperate political opinions somewhere in Martinet? It's because I keep saying none of the above to political stuff, isn't it? It's also about that, but it's also more. Perhaps it's a hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. Okay, first, where is this Kingdom of Conscience? It's not a place. It's a moment of time that can only arise in right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved by a handful of times. Uh... You bring about those circumstances. Incrementally. Yawn. Yeah, they're a little faster with a little speed. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real lasting change can only come from about gradually, increment by increment. Okay. But what's the Kingdom of Consciousness like, actually like? The Kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe. Partially because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The Kingdom of Consciousness is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-illogical, and even post-sexual. Hmm. 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 Sound incredible, Alan Z. Let's go there right now. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. 
Did you miss the part about compromise and taking things slow? Oh, right. Then let's get there eventually? That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Revishal. When that real democracy kicks in a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. What the shit did I just do? Alright, well, I want to do this next. One more door. I really want to know what's behind that door. What the fuck? I swear some of these are just so weird. Wait, finger pistols? Hold up. Finger pistols? I just saw that. <laughs> what do you mean finger pistols? Can I shoot someone with my fingers? That'd be awesome. I actually don't think I've ever looked at these. I'm gonna see if there's any in here that are interesting. Oh, Manji, I need to know how you got finger pistols. A bankruptcy sequence. Suicide of Krasmazal. Koldumama Dakwa. A finger on the eject button. That's also pretty good. Homosexual underground. Opioid receptor antagonist. Okay, I definitely think I would play this game a little differently <laughs> on like personal playthroughs Just to see what happens. Uh, we'll use that experience point to get some ass. Yes Damn, are we really not able to do anything else? I feel like this guy is super important and we just fucked up. For how I got exactly, I think I did some dialogue options for it. It might help that I put motorics high since that increases the reaction speed. Uh, I'm hoping we didn't just fuck something up and we're gonna be, when we walk away, we're gonna miss out on this guy. I'm hoping that's not the case. Still can't open that door. Uh, time to walk all the way back. To, uh, to the church because uh, I wanted to talk to those idiots in the tank or tank the tent oh my goodness another storm uh, I know they increased some, some stats but you don't have anything in your hand oh that's interesting I probably wouldn't use that because uh, we need to have this boombox and this flashlight all out at the same time no matter what. I will come back to you eventually. Not now. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna do it one more time before we head back. I'm gonna do the wall. I will get it. I swear to God, Manji. You son of- Snake Eyes! Are you- Manji, I'm about to put you on timeout. You gotta stop this nonsense about cursing me. We're gonna have problems, Manji! I swear it! This is not fair. <laughs> Why? Why can't I look at a wall and ponder it? Alright. Um. God, I really wish there was a fast travel. Oh, this is so tiresome walking back and forth. Actually, did you have hats? I can't remember. The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% guarantee. Okay, we have another check. Uh, what's the percent of the wall killing away? I think it was like, what, 58%? The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. Ah, I 100% see. A pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says, sub insulin dick rendezvous. The frame appears to be hand carved out of bone. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. For the first time, the street vendor's voice trails off as he watches you inspect the glasses. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You become a sea monster, Harry. Giant hidden. And strangely tender at heart. All is blue. 
Yes, but they also make your soul quiver like jello. So deep. Wow, officer, you look so cool. The street vendor has picked up his face again, as you observe the wool through deep sea tinted glasses. And they can be yours for a mere three real. My regular customers pass them all out because they got no taste, but you found them. Kim, what about these? Lieutenant tilts his head and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician, he declares, eyes still squinting behind his own glasses, like a blind musician. But you could do worse. Take them if you want. Ew, they're both fucking awful. I'm good. Do we not have a hat? Well, that's pretty good if you want to do, uh... Holy shit, 50 fucking real, though. It's actually pretty good, though, if you are mostly a physical character. I could have sworn he had, uh... You keep coming back. That's good, officer. I guess when he had a hat. We haven't really gotten any good hats. The hat we have in our inventory, I just don't want to use. Oh my god. I really wish there was fast travel. Because this is, this is killing me. I'm getting stuck on something, too. What am I stuck on? Uh, I should have got a net out of the cold on the first day. That got me the Dick Mullen hat. Wait, what? How did you get a net out of the cold? What? Oh, I get, I'm assuming if you uh, told her mother to put her inside or something. There's so many different things about this game. Oh, you idiots. What you doing in here? Making a poor last stay out here. Come on, get in. The warm stuff's getting out. Squeeze in. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. He just for you to squeeze in. Oh god, what is this music? I already hate these kids. Cares for a bit of water. Winter says it's still. Where the fuck do you even sleep in here? Go speak to Andre. I'm just annoyed. You're annoyed? Why are you annoyed? What did I ever do to you? What do I want to speak to you first? I suck at socializing, man. If you go speak to Andre, I'll have time to tune in, get a reading on your side. I already hate these kids. That's ridiculous. See, it's already going wrong. Sign is off. Fuck is this? Scared? Angry? Hard to say which this man is. He's just scared. What is this portrait? The young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Walshy tape player. He's nodding on to the music. That's nodding? He's literally just fist bumping it into the air. What do you mean he's nodding? He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous evangelical secret. Hardcore! Hardcore! Still say nothing. Hardcore to the mega! Still say Internally nothing. Internally coherent! Still say Hardcore. nothing. Hardcore! Alright! Yeah! Say nothing. First his brow is his very large head trees, the sublime visible movement of the music and a very real air of the stuff he Hardcore! Ah! He lets out an agonized roar over the feeblish. Obviously not too hardcore beat below. Uh, no, but seriously, I'm a little worried. The question is, what is the question? 
Just answer the question. There was no question. <laughs> Solve the egghead puzzle. Oh my god. Has there been a right way out of the garden of forking pass, you think? Are you hold on, stop it. This is hardcore. Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! Alright. Here comes the night! What? But hardcore! It's is hardcore! It? You're gonna just keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. What the fuck am I in right now? The cop train did not prepare you for this. What to do? Oh my god. Be close! True! Hard! Full! Car! Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! Internally coherent! I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenary behind the behind rolling rags hostel. Good morning, yeah! One, two, three! Yeko Qatar! The place to be! What is happening? I'm beginning to think this really doesn't have anything to do with the case. It's the message, so listen and you will see! No illusion! The spirit is what you feel! Oh my god, what is happening right They're now? Close. True, hard, full, car. It's hard it? car. I don't want to say skip that. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am. Oh my god. The true, hard, hardcore, hardcore to them internally coherent. I'm gonna fucking strangle someone if they say hardcore one more time. All core, all right, yeah. Please tell me what exactly are you Gotta doing? Gotta get the people going. Uh, why? I'm the party boy. It's my job. I think I'm also a party boy. Two on a track. Watch your back. Watch out for the heart attack. Oh my God. True. Hard. 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 Co internally coherent. All core. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking lose my mind with this character because <laughs> every single one of his lines is voice. <laughs> First battle is very hard. Core. Ah. Is core. it though? <laughs> It is! What is it? I mean, really. The question! What is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. No! Fuck you, game. No. 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 We're not doing this shit. Give me my fucking 10 XP, go fuck yourself. I'm not going through. I'm not wasting all that time. The hard, hard, co internally, all core, all right, ha! Is it though? But is it? No, but Shut seriously. Shut the fuck up, Gabe. I'm, I'm not losing all that time. It sounds like Han's lifeguard. The guy on your back is crawling. But like, you can't even hear the music anymore. There's a Hawthorne tree on Rue de St. Lane, right next to the canal. Don't be alarmed, everything is okay. He isn't actually worried, everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it's even more so. Uh, I had their lungs on your belt buckle. So you're worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? Are you... Why their lungs on your heart belt buckle? The lungs are for love. La amour, la compassion, la, la auto discipline. Love! Suddenly yells and the world seems to stop. In a woman's lungs. Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid. This strange, damaged feeling grows on, on and on. I never love. Oh, because I never loved someone like you before. Uh, dopamine surge a couple. Oh my god. It feels like electricity blowing down your scalp. Dissipating into your neck. Feels good. Like a spark of light in that moribund sponge you call your body. Alright, I'm not. I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. I, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. I really don't want to talk to them anymore. Oh, I'm already doing a really great selling with these characters. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends hand of greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. There is definitely something futuristic about his hair. Aggressively so. In the sense that this is what the future will look like. Oh god, the future truly is grim. Imbes imbecilic, yes. Should the future ever come, it would look deeply imbecilic. Like this guy. Shake his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. Ew. 
He's trying to protect and inspire confidence. This is my pussy. Annoyed. The man with the earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egghead. Egg! He yells. The tape player, I would love this head can use the blast strange music. Why do you look like Rick from Rick and Morty? Together with a cell burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Uh-huh. Wait, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. That means they haven't set up a single one yet. Why are you, you here? see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. All the for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. The place is a shithole. I, I apologize for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. He has authority issues. Uh-huh. Uh, was there something you wanted? Yeah. It's a matter of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. This is my exact question. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dopeheads and burnouts if left unattended. And what separates you three from those? Dopeheads! Burnouts! He really spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin Hayes on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revachon. Strike that, the world! And sad yet, because the dopeheads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. Good, this calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. Huh. Uh, I won't say for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. Yes, yes. And the worst part is, they're also spooky. What exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you could be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, this spookiness is that kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community center. And a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't heat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spin tapes about them spooking it up. Plays at bad signs. No one could dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. He turns to you. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter, getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesia it's meant for their property for. Hey, I'll look into it. Tell me more. Alright, man. Claps his hands. Yes. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. Boys exchange giddy looks. Uh, did you put padlocks on the door? Yes. I asked Noi to install a measure against the more drifters and wandering in. It's a temporary fix. It's something to contain the situation. I had to do it in a hurry. Not my best work, but it should hold for a while. Uh, what about the key? Of course. Noi, give the officer the key. Alright. Sweet. <laughs> The speed freak dips into his bell pack and produces a yellow key. Then makes a oh my god, of course there's a fucking check for this. Then makes a sudden cool and juice move tossing into your general direction. Be the cool cop! Catch the key as it flies towards you. Uh huh. There's a time is frozen somehow. You think you can sense the key moving in the air? Yeah, this is gonna be way cool. Don't ruin the cool by overdoing it. Raise your hand in front of your face with minimum effort. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you fucking kidding me? We would have just died from a key hitting us in the face. Would these kids be? Would these kids have murdered us technically if that if we let that happen? Would this would this, would this be three teenagers who just killed a cop? Would their lives be ruined because a stupid officer couldn't fucking catch a piece a, a, a key? Why? Just why? Blam! Straight in the eye! Straight in the old eye orb! In the looking ball! Man off, it's nothing. Pick that goddamn key up, put it in your pocket, and move on. 
house. Goddamn asshole. What's wrong with you? Get your damn pain now. Man, I'm super sorry. That was totally my bad. I got overexcited. Threw them too hard. I'm sorry. Looks like he's genuinely sorry he didn't throw them better. Oh my god, we're actually gonna do it! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bend your face in mockery of his use and contrition. You almost I murdered me! A cop! That's use of lethal force. Finally, really, I'm sorry, man. Just take this, okay? He pulls out some black paper from his belt pack. Wow, that looks like quite a lot there. Are you fucking serious right now? That's the least you can do. Holy shit! 25 real? I hope that settles it. Oh, wait. The key. He cautiously hands you the yellow key. Did we just get 20? Wow. Yes, I think we just got bribed. He's shifting his spot uncomfortably. Still feeling sorry for the mishap. We were talking about the padlock, I think. How long are those people have been locked in there? Lamp buying time. How long? Like a week, maybe? Wait, how can you be sure they haven't started to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90%. Maybe 85% sure they're all still alive. Somewhere in the ruinous past that led you here, there's been something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Uh, Andre, do you know what involuntary manslaughter means? Yes, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. And I learn about crime stuff. Then I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on. Most people aren't even sure they're ever alive in their entire lives. What does that even mean? I don't know. What was the thing? What does anything mean, really? Oh, yeah. He looks, <laughs> he looks at his friend with an expression of profound understanding. Sounds like nonsense. You're right. It is nonsense. Total garbage. I knew you'd see through it. You're one smart cop. I get by. Now, what was I with that padlock? He nods a tenly and says, Oh my god. No! Um. Uh, I'm gonna ask you about this temple. Equipment. Yeah, what? I see you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah. Good to have. Bits to carry. When I first scoured the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled, too. Oh. He doesn't know what to say. It's the one I sell at the fuel station. It's like he's lying to you, my liege. But he's slippery enough to know there's nothing for you to grab hold of. Fucked up with uh, letting them uh, schmooze me. Hold up. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? Well, first of all, you're a smart cop. This car cop like you would understand if something wasn't quite right, so this should be easy. Mm-hmm. And then there's Narcomania. Indeed. One of them came upon the abandoned church. They wanted to turn it into a club for dance music. But the agents of Narcomania had overrun it. You should have think all of the narco they must have already consumed in there. Narco is bad. Plus, it has to be considered, you can't invent the future of dance music in the smelly old tent. Imagine you had the church. That settles it. Analysis complete. The story checks out. Alright, we're probably gonna have to... We're probably gonna have to actually go in the church to solve this eventually. So let's actually go do that. So obviously they're planning something more here. We just gotta figure out what it is. Padlock. The lock turns easily. You hear clicks the shadow box open. Let's go. The lieutenant nods at you. Open the doors. As you do, you hear 
As you do, you hear in the echo of the doomed commercial... Wait, what? As you do, you hear... I'm assuming that end isn't supposed to be there. You hear the echo of the doomed commercial area. It's black halls and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark in years of the church, still rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. Whoa. 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 Okay. Uh. Wow. This is ominous. Strange stillness fills you if you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Wait, is that a hint? Uh. This repair looks half finished. Figure what happened later. It's not part of the original church. Uh, I'm assuming that's the game telling me don't run. So I'm going to walk, I guess? More of the fork lightning patterns we saw last night. Bark beetles? No, it's intentional, so I forgot style. I'm going to assume the game does not want me to run from that comment. Also, of water, live fire runs directly under it. The silence in this part of the church is almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums. It seems that sound here is detached from the source somehow. If not blotted out right. Truly unusual. You can hardly hear your own breathing. <laughs> Wait, what did we just get? Is this what we just got? Uh, stomp your feet and clap your hand. Da, 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 da. Oh, damn it, I didn't mean to do that. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. It's unnerving. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. Here's a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow. What's happening? Dan points his ears and shakes his head, then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Almost nothing, and begin to worrying me. The church just has strange acoustics. Someone's engineering threat. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. Maybe the church was designed in this way to prevent boisterous activity? Singing and dancing on its own premise? Maybe they wanted to discourage singing and dancing? Hmm, could be. He doesn't seem entirely convinced, though. Look up into the bell tower. Early rows of ceilings. Oh, God. Uh, the order of those ceilings panels become barely visible, and disappear completely in the darkness of the towel overhead. What's about to happen? Just darkness without end. Makes your head spin. What's the darkness like? Filled with vague shapes of woodwork. A sense of great height. I can make out something, anything. There's nothing. You're dizzy and disoriented as you see dark and more dark. Rising. Officer, what are you attempting to look at? He follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is you are seeing. Blink. What has happened? <gasps> oh god! Uh, 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 you see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's impossible to talk to it? Kim? Kim? Can't, I can't save. Uh, we got one more door. Yay. All psych white checks unlocked? Interesting. Hi. 
Why well, can't? Oh, I can't say it. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> is that a man? Looks like a part of the carpentry of the building came alive is now studying you intently. Say nothing, be quiet for now. The man leads forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unending, and un unreadable gaze. Then he speaks. I bet your <laughs> alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, huh? But don't worry, everything's gonna be alright. You've come to the right place. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Misk, and a district in Jamrock. There's a sizable contingent of Milobozo speaking Mesks in Revishol. The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of the bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do oh, okay, so we're not hallucinating. I was. I'm being, I like, was like, are we hallucinating this or can Kim see this? No, Kim can see this, so we are not hallucinating. This is real life right now. Hey, what was that about the bottle again? I haven't even drank that much lately. They off it already. Sheesh. Yeah, I guess I have been a bit of a problem. I'm, I've been getting out of hand lately, but... This does good, eh? I see deep inside you. Your body and spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgence. And you don't even know it. Hmm. I thought that one of the options was run away. Wait, I missed it, ma'am. Oh, great. More patronizing. So original. I know it's hard to admit you got a problem. I was like you once. Couldn't take an honest look into my own heart and see I was in pain. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? Sometimes I feel like you guys you have a point there. What do you think you are? Some crazy guy under the roof? What is this shit? You know, alcohol is central to my identity. If I want to drink, I just want to be me. Uh For some reason I feel like you have a point Don't there. Don't trust me. Trust them all. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. He's trying to throw you off your game. He's not an act, my liege. Saving perchance, he have to see his very self. This man is a zealot. Uh, do you know where the other spooker is? Point strange things around you. Other spooker? Oh, it's a viesha muy estudioso. He laughs. No, no, Holmes. The agenda is... Grandma? Wait, so there is another person living in a church, and it's a Viagetta? No, I just call her Viagetta because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. He scratches his head. Or maybe not that young. Age is just one of the many masks we wear. And you know where she is? That's all, That's what I said, Holmes. How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We've got different interests. <laughs> hmm. So, we've got nothing else to tell me. How she looks, what she does, who is she? I'm afraid... <clears throat> I'm afraid not, I say. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Or search through her radio computer. Uh, some neighbors want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the town outside, right? I've seen them. I think they're scared of me. Hmm. Wait, do they have a reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one no anymore, anyway. Uh, so what do you think? I have a nightclub, that is. Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up here, inviting. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Where'd you come from? He smiles strangely, turns his head up toward to look at the darkness of the church tower. Up there, Holmes. Are you human? You're moving like a human. 
He chuckles. I am, at least in part, Holmes. And so the mother love burns away the crude distinctions of the body. Hey, are you a boyadero? A boyadero? No, Holmes. I don't go in for that kind of thing. It's all about surrendering to the mother now. Sound like you're not from around here. He chuckles. Haven't you ever met a mask before, Cobron? Surprising number of us around Revachol. And it's great! Such a diversity is a boon to the economy! He laughs. Not sure I'm contributing to the economy, none, Holmes. Well, at least you're human. That's a relief. He grins. Glad you're feeling more comfortable. First timers are always nervous. There must be something illegal about living in a church ceiling. I don't know what yet, but there must be. Oh man, I'd love to see that statute. He pauses to think. I'm sure I'd be trespassing if the church was in use. But it's not, hombre. I've done my share of illegal shit. Used to be in the gang the whole deal. But even memories of that time were fading. Most of them are already gone. Um... <laughs> so many people losing their memory. A certain portent. Of doom. Nah, I see. It's not like that. Best thing that could happen to you, losing your memory. Do you remember your name, sir? The lieutenant is not particularly interested in his information. He's just trying to assert some control over the conversation. Tiago is my name, but those syllables don't mean much to these these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place among your fellows, your place in the world. Land's got no use for such a place anymore. My name's Harry. Send your hand for a greeting. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. He ignores your hands, his limbs a mere shadow above the ceiling. What are you, uh, what are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a profession of the world up there. A way out into nothingness. He nods towards the ceiling. This church was built around it for the purposes of veneration. A circlet, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'll be sure to enough to go drink it from her directly. Wow, I fucked up that line horribly. Uh, what happened when you drink from this preparation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally at one with the state of the world before the reality begins. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two or a few about that. Is this mother of silence you keep talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, I say. She is the one who can be painted or sculpted. She is a cavity in the dark, beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. And no one ever will. Ain't it just sweet? No, I'm not saying that. I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I am a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. You should sing for me, the superstar cop. And from no Marietta, Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is silent for the mother. Marietti is a mask style of music and dance commonly seen in all forms of festivity, especially weddings. It's a delightfully quaint, owing to its peasant origins. How'd you find this place? This church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me. Wait, it didn't belong to me. Right, I'm not gonna say that last thing. Suey finger lingers on the beam, spinning into the shadows. You know why the church was abandoned? The lease raid a while back. He responds, his voice suddenly fat. Did you witness it? Not really. Well, at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. It looks like he truly doesn't remember. There's a vagueness to his sense of time. That is incredibly creepy. And we're apparently just going to ignore this man. And not wonder anymore. Oh yeah, the boombox is back. That kind of ruined the atmosphere. Good job, boombox. What a nice man. We're just going to ignore him, because apparently his importance in this matter is irrelevant from what the game's telling us.
<laughs> yeah, not at all suspicious. We don't know what they look like. All we know is they have an accent. This feels like this is like endgame room. Right? Am I crazy for feeling this feels like endgame stuff? Like where this was like something you would see before the very end of a, like of the game, like a boss fight. Uh, machine stands in the corner, watched over by figures in the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. Says the lieutenant, stepping closer. And this time it's almost turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. We should leave. I doubt this place and there's any connection to the case. Okay, this place is gonna probably have connection to the case, but we don't have the we don't we haven't been able to connect the dots yet. Yes, but the cheese looks like just the one in the zoomed commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework. Careful not to touch anything. A quaint little box of radio waves. Wait, just let me investigate it. You see a fluorescent play and print button on the keyboard. Hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The tenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from the diamond-shaped glasses. You f you're free to proceed. What's inside the compartment? Uh, behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side and a black marker. Log. February to March. Press play. Speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the ma machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Oh my god, this again. Good evening. Fortress oh, accident on Sage Brune. This is East Indian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with at the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. You're on! It's me again. How are you? Good, thank you. It's not clear whether she recognized your voice. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Uh, I looked inside a court, but the tape on the filament just said log February and March. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Maybe he knows something. Lieutenant nods towards Tiago. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this log. Ooh, shit. That's not good. I feel like that's gonna come up. Uh, press print. Possible is recording something. Two decks of real tapes on empty. Five word is filled with complex equations. They were recent. Hey, uh, buddy, uh, did you uh happen to hear a uh, password of sorts? Do you by any chance heard the oh, hey, Viajetta? It's Goffy in the back. Oh wait, I'm in the mother's love. Uh, I've said a password to a rear computer. Too many times, they say. You need it for something? So, so surveys are a good way to fish for personal information. Especially in the name of public s safety. Uh, I'm doing a survey of passwords and passcodes. I need to find any regional trends. In the interest of public safety, of course. Don't sweat it, Vato. The password is afterlife death. What do you think of that? Make me almost pity la nihilista piquena from when I hear it. Okay then, thanks. I think we're done here, I say. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Oh shit. I'm hoping running... Okay, I guess running isn't a big deal. Uh, press play again. After life, death. Good. I'm unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Or just accident. Press print. The pair prints out a long text document with two paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Read the printout. The first entry, mean oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, first entry, mean on the 4th, February 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church. The board was boarded up. So I used a crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of ordinary. I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get this electricity in. The lieutenant leads closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, thundering under his breath. Fourth of February. 
just over a month ago, who set up those machines that's been here for quite a while. You think this log might be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local. His eyes wander to the various machines around him. Eccentric. Read the second entry. 6 February 51. Had a little chat with the local fisherman. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, alright. Someone figured out the electricity. See? Even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. What was that about narcotics? This could prove to be interesting. Wait. Narcotics? Look around the entire log building. I doubt that we can find any. It's just idle fishermen gossip to scare away the kids. He looks at the stained glass window. Nothing spooky about this place either. It's just abandoned and cold. And an awful part of town. And why doth the lieutenant protest against spending time here so often? Read the third entry. 7th February 51. Finally, got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, new antenna. I'm thinking Esker series. Something advanced? Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot. Fourth entry? Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art, making around somewhere out of town. Suis so Law started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. Artists yet again. Harassing citizens, stealing badges, occupying public spaces with installations like the one here. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. Programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss to be done with it. I still understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say it must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Data loss? Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about backup data getting destroyed, and how everyone thought it was the author's fault? He has just the glasses. Let's just keep reading. Artists, programmers, Lexi, who are all these people? I think these people work in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the doomed commercial area. They must be her formal co-workers. Fifth entry. 12th February 51. Bought some food from the grocery store. Apparently there's a strike going on in the harbor. And we're not happy to see the Martinet people again. Everything now set up in the church. I'm gonna start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. <laughs> the strike. He strikes, strokes his chin. We're needing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's the ra that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. Sixth entry. 25th February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now. I'm trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. I didn't even feel like logging into disappointment. But I did discover a curious audio-spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows loud. It swallows sound. I need to get some mics. Is she talking about... Lieutenant looks to his right, toward the silence. Wait a minute. Is that the girl? That's outside? 28th February 51. Yes, the first real recording is confirmed that the swallow is real, and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately 3 meters. It means the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the real data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the pillar of silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? But what could it be? Lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. What kind of young disco men appear? Okay, maybe not. I thought maybe... Sorry, the when they brought up the mic and starting sounds, I thought we were referring... We were going to find out that those uh, group of kids were actually not as dumb as they appeared. And that they were just covering up their uh, tracks. So what kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church? I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've been capturing the future of dance music. One Neo Disc song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to figure factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Or I can even say hello, she, hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want someone distracting me from my work. She must be describing a cell. The girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. March 51. 
I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the ra oh radio computer in our old office in Martinet. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some curse. A Martinet of her. That's me. I was the one who broke into that radio computer. And the circuit board must be placent. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with that machine. Wait a minute, is it about to start, like, talking about all of our actions leading up to this? March 51. A new 2 millimeter, two mil two meter aux cable, noodles, crackers, ping ping, energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. Oh! God. Dad, fuck. Ugh. Oh. Your reading's interrupted by the sound of a church door opening. Uh-oh. Strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Uh-oh. Soon another programmer. Hello? Breaking into my radio computer, I see. She glares at you as she holds down the off button for several sections. Seconds, the machine. Reboots. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. Hmm. Uh, we're on a steer on a side case representing certain music ve music venue organizers. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. Trail looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whir back to life. It is me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now, please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her after she has rebooted the machine. Okay, I guess we'll go look at this. Uh, in white, silver, and Africa finance, young woman mother of humanism stands before you. Crack runs against her body. She's impossibly tall, oval-faced, and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Captured in her arms are a peel of growing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. Neil. What the fuck? Okay, so we just went from whatever this was to now this. Okay. Your knees touch the floor. Floorboards are hard and cold. There you, there you kneel amongst the snowdrifts. Diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. Uh, close your eyes first. The world is silent, but for the creaks and cracks in the massive wooden structure behind you, Covers you from the wind outside. In the darkness, you sense her eyes on you, inspecting you with multicolored glass, as if you're a bug under a microscope. Open your eyes. The woman looks down at you, kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a little sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eyes. Of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. You. It's morning. As that terrible world passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Do the same as you get up. Then just touch your chest four times. Then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light at the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. I swear to God. Whoa. The cheeks off broken shards fall into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. And a text. A leaked motif. Below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Unknown. Who's the older woman? The Esuchion on her throne says, Irene, the navigator. She's depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rechapel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen, her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, barriers, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. The motto, what does it say? Below both women in luminous black leather. Après la vie morte, après la mort, la vie de nouveau. 
Someone, can someone uh, translate that for me? Unless the game does it. And then along the left side, oppress le monde, le gris oppress le gris, le monde de nouveau. Yeah, someone, someone translate these for me, if you would please. Oh, never mind. It did it for me. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This is the great leitmotiv of human humanism. A summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isla, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Could these words be the password that unlocks the fill- oh. Well. Probably could've used this. Lieutenant, this used to say, after life, death after... Death, life after. He nods. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exclamation is common in DeLorean sarcasm. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral in terms related to motto. We're already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. What is the RCM motto now? Justice, union, preju preju prejudice, and force. I like the other one better. So do I. This is the worst day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the DeLorean Church of Humanity in Martinet. Or the small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of this place? It's a minor landmark. Not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. He lowers his voice. It was built not long after Revishold's founding. 300 or so years after first-generation settlers. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, only animals had roamed before in the wild reeds. Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie do do. He whispers in the silence of the great building. <laughs> what the fuck, kid? I thought it was 30 there. Nice. Okay, good. I would have been a little mad. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. As arrived, the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. Is there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term to emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But, terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity and shouldn't have started, you shouldn't have started thinking about her. No, there was something bad about her. I want to know. You already do. Although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her theriers. She was most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Innocences, oh my god, that word. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaign she ranged, waged against the Mesk state. Then there was the resettlement program. What happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself from in innocentric rule, part of the world where expecting whiplash from accelerating the secularism. Sec secular, oh my god, these words. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Magritte were problematic as well. The centers were supposed to be a military force she called the Army of Humanity. There's an who suggesting those who fight against her are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb, an icon such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen. The green eyes, the color of the Pacific. Mare interregnum. Little is known of our Marchese husband, as if she vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. The subtle terror is a part of her icon icon iconography, oh my god. Lieutenant Sviafreitor, you stood there for over five minutes. Lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? <laughs> I'm not yelling that. She is somehow connected to the case. 
she's been dead for 300 years. I'm almost a thousand percent certain she isn't connected to the case. He takes his glasses off to clean them. None of this, in fact, the church, the coast, this isn't a good place to get lost in. <laughs> hey, her innocence Dolores, oh my god. Her innocence Dolores today like little figurines, right? Like holding little men between her figures? What? You have the headless fallen rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. What? Win who back? Can't win her back. She's a long dead historical figure. Don't be pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. This isn't funny. You have a bad feeling about this one. I should, yes. This is a task of mine. So very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. What? Why? Because she's a stained glass window. That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Like what? Is the task still on? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone out to other things already. Only a strange little sadness remains. What? 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 I'm so confused. I don't even whatever. Let's go back to let's go back to reality. What is it? Uh Hey, are you the lead programmer of World Untethered by any chance? Yes. Or no, not anymore. That project is dead. She didn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she strains her back. Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Lukanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. Oh, reality is lame. I'll give you that one. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how can I help you. She did say over 16 years of experience. She must have started programming when she was a teenager. Have you seen the man living up in the rafters? But you know he's around. Yes. He's seen you. And? And? The crab man has seen you. I don't care. I don't care about the crab man. She barely looks up, now turning to the machine's printer. Wow, she really doesn't. Not afraid this one. How do you feel about anodic dance music? What? She squints her eyes. I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard of it. Same here. It just doesn't connect here. Half on your heart. Not like disco does, anyway. Maybe it'd have to be on drugs to get it. But to a silver mind, it does sound inspired rug with it. No idea what has to do with dancing or music. Right, right. How do you feel about a club for anodic music, dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? She looks up, shaking her head. I've got some news for you. It's not the nightclub they went to build here. But what do they want to build then? Take a guess, why don't you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, um, a petting zoo, a place for animals. The lead programmer sighs. I can't believe they got you so easily. We'll have a talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck. Lieutenant notes, I am not coming in here. In there. Um, doing an abandoned church. You really like those questions, don't you? There's a hint of amusement in her tired eyes. Isn't you center what that fat union guy wants? That is correct. He wanted to, uh... He did want to build a union center here. Although, that's what he says he wanted to build here. We don't know what he actually wants to build here. There are big complaints coming from your neighbors. I am conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. She says, ready to stand her ground again. What research? I am looking for the location of a 2 millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. 
The lieutenant raises his brow, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the day loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. She stares at the burnished antenna on a nearby table. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world? What does that mean exactly? Exactly, what does it mean? There's something frantic about her as she looks her gaze out with you, eyes shining like pearls. Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is, because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation. Wait for your answer. Oh, no. Where you going? Easy. You measure by the world around you, around it. Uh, uh, you measure by clicking the amount surrounding on what, and that which on that which exists. Exactly, she nods. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've been trying to use hydro transducers to record the silence, to find out where it begins. Be honest, but honestly, it's not very progressing very well. She grows silent, staring at the circle of basins. It looks like some ancient ris ritual. Said the research has been going well. Why not? Ugh. Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a. She stops mid sentence. You know what? It would be really helpful if you would just stop talking and let me work. Do you have any idea where the hole might locate it? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without much success. Strange things may flourish in the dark. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church, a place where all audio vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow, and the higher you go, the less you record. Pillar of silence. Are you sure it's not an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the crab man lives. I know. You don't think crab man might somehow be responsible here? No, I don't. She sounds mildly annoyed by this line of questioning. Her hands typing hundreds of commands into the machine. Uh huh. And that's all we have to say about this? I feel like we skipped ahead a bunch. Yes. I guess we just leave? I feel like we're missing something here. <laughs> I think we'll just take that. I have a hat, if I can have a hat on. What is happening? I feel like we keep running into stuff where we don't know what to say because I feel like we're not, like, specifically on that line of questioning. Also, since we have that door uh, unlocked, that's, or that door passive unlocked, how about we go actually check that? Uh, we might have to call that, though, for the end game, though, day, though, because it's getting a bit late. Oh. Well, shit. What? Wait. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I guess we'll not find out. We'll never find out what was in that door. I'm not going all the way back for that. I was hoping that if we unlocked uh, this passive, we might have. Uh, I mean, it says all psych white checks are unlocked, so I don't know what that. If that means anything. That's kind of depressing. Kind of hopeful to see what was behind that door. Alright, you idiots.
Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? By the church, I checked it out. Then, he tenses up. What happened? I talked to a shadow clad being climbing the beams. A man living on the ceiling. Oh man, the crab man you mean. Who is he? What do you think? Uh, he's okay to be honest, very speechful. Really? Huh. What's he doing in the church? Um, he's all sight, which I've seen done again, and he might have a higher chance. Like, volumetric ship compressor helps with that one endurance check game. I think. Huh. I'm not admittedly sure where all the sight checks were, but, uh. Huh. Just preaching and praying from the looks of it. No matter. Paranoid young man, I'm creepy. Is it going to be a problem? Yeah, no, it is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? Uh, actually, you told me you wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I know, man. Does it feel like a major hindrance to you? He rubs his jaw. Spooky guy coming around with all the guests are trying to have a nice, friendly hopper time. Uh, you're just going to have to live with the crab man. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think on it. No, it doesn't help that you basically save and reload on all the checks. <laughs> Fair enough. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light. Yeah! Maybe uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay then, what about the other spooker? The one the grandma's clothes. Did you see her? Eh, it was using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer of Orchard's accident appeared. Programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She did not like the Anno Anno Dick dance club idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. Drops a hammer back in the toolbox. She doesn't like it at all. Have a nice night, Red. A shame, he sighs. What can we do now? You see a way out of this jab and into a laser lit future of dance and unity. Unity! Dance! She made it very clear she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict Victor. No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you on it, man. No, no, I think he's right. Maybe we're approaching it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we just want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. Lines in the dark exist! Coexist! At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. Programmer, does she like anecdotal dance music? <laughs> Why? She gets down. I mean, who doesn't? Just listen to that crazy pulse. Wonderful. He nods enthusiastically. Coexistent fails. You can always muscle her out, right? If it's all right with you. What do you think? All right. We'll see how it goes. Alright, we're gonna. I actually do wanna try this one. Speaking of saving. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Oh, wow. Okay. The number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? Okay, kids, now gather around. The young speed freak puts down a bus of cast and looks at you. No one of the large heads seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. Sometime in the past, I'm not sure where and how, it fell sick and became the shadow you see now. Before that, I have reason to believe I was a police detective. But you still are. I oh, was good enough in this job to be awarded the rank of Lieutenant Yofreitor. I could have been captain. Imagine that. What happened? The egghead looks very serious suddenly. Life tore me a new asshole. That's a real downer. He shakes his hard head. Now, obviously, that might as well have been a thousand years ago, but there's still some detective left in me. The young speed freak is silent. He senses something is wrong. So to hand it, there's something else going on that I'm being naive. Hey man, 
Who knows what she's all about? He scoffs. I get it. She doesn't want us in the church. She's got something against us. Who doesn't like to dance? She doesn't like to dance. This isn't the making of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea what you were out of that collusion. What is wrong? Look, we even have speakers. He points to the speaker. One speaker. They have one speaker. Well, they did. They did freak out at the distilled water. Distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. But all the cellular-based life. What's your point, Lawbringer? Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean, friend? The other speaker. You only have one. There's a one-speaker system. It's monodynamic. We know the first thing about sound reproduction in adult music. Other speaker. <laughs> yeah, this may be even brain damage talking, but you're definitely never heard of monodynamic or one speaker systems. You have no headphones. Wouldn't Excel need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. I know you pawned them, likely for lab equipment and drug ingredients. I'm sorry, this is no lab equipment and no drug ingredients. There's no need for being piled on anymore, is there? No shit. He sounds tired. In short, you tried to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's... come on, that's... Punishable by summary execution? It's not. His eyes are wide with fear. So what are we going to do with you? What do you might do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. We do this lawman style. First, you tell me everything, then I pass judgment. Or else. There's a lot of clanks he lets a wrench drop into his toolbox. He thinks for a moment, and opens his mouth, but closes it again, and then finally raises his hand. Things are way too hard for an option in this city. It's not like we're gonna turn the church to win this club in East Revishol. Because we are. We totally are. But he's gonna turn it into a speed lap first. You know, get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, look your assholes moving in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place is empty, and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky, are they? No, man. It's spooky, all right. This is what they would also probably call the police if we start speeding there. But the sign was way off, too. I didn't feel the love at all. Whatever you're thinking is right, sir, but please, we were only trying to make a living. This is it. Judgment time. one I want to do. I'm not really sure here. On the one hand, I kind of want the money. I still don't think we're going to be able to get to 500 for uh, the thing, but...
wish I, I mean, I did save before this, but. Don't like, give him the wallet. The young man doesn't move. His earrings rattle for attention. What does Jaws clench? He says, the fucking way. Yes, fucking way. Moby later points his friend. His finger shakes in the air. Without a word, the other speech freak pulls the red wall of his textbook and hands it to you. His disdain is palpable. His eyes pierce you like lightning. He lets go of the wallet. <laughs> nah, I don't want to push my luck. Um. I don't even want money. You robbed us blind. Fuck it. Yeah! The young man's teeth smile wide into his inhuman proportions. The seeds beam in the floodlight. Respectable. I really feel the signs right about now. I'm gonna talk soon again. Remember his way to persuade her. I'm sure you'll figure something out. We can manage it with her if we get inside. Bye, officer. Eh, why not? Let's see what we can do. I wonder if she says anything now that we know that they're making a speed lab. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you gonna help us? With the church, I mean. I'll help you, alright. Hey, let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. Your associates tried to use me to set up a drug lab. I'm guessing you knew of this plan. I did, and I'm sorry. She doesn't appear surprised. For what it's worth, which isn't much. This is why I did not go into the tent. The tent looks at the ocean, squinting his eyes. Typical delinquency. You don't get to choose your posse. They choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I should have tried to talk Andre out of it. I don't care. I'm loco. I just wanted you to know that I know about the plan. Okay. But I still regret it. I should have been able to control them. I will in the future, I promise. May I ask, what did you tell them? Once I cracked their play, I didn't really care. I'm not an arbiter. You're someone else's problem. Good call, detective. If you lose your line trying to mediate everything these delinquents cut up with, fate will take care of it for us. We won't be anyone's problem. I'll have them on ramps, I promise. Uh, I think we should actually go and head to bed for tonight. It's getting really late in game. Right? Or should we... Actually, let's go see if we can talk to Sue again. Right? I feel like we should try to see if we can help her out. Maybe this is just a side quest. I don't know why. This felt like this was going to eventually go back to the... Whatchamacallit. Yes, what is it? Um... What if you didn't have to leave? Talk to Andre. He wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. She replies, her expression unchanged. Hold on, you don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. It's not the anecdotic music that makes her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. Are you bitter because your radio game project failed? That's right. Something strange shines in her eyes. We couldn't get our welcomes to happen. I don't want anything to happen. Any ever again. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research. You mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I can help you with something? What? She looks up from her work, disoriented. No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then maybe you won't have to live in a church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. Alright. She says, blinking twice. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace if you really want to help. 
is stored on my filament memory, and I'm unable to go fetch it myself. Uh, by your own workspace, do you mean the uh, Studio Fortune Accident, the Doom Commercial District? Yeah, that's the one. You can get into the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookshop lady. Wait, bookshop bookstore lady? You mean Plaisance? That's her name, I believe. Actually, I've already been inside the Doom Commercial area. Good. Then you might know there's a giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. And where exactly is the offsite copy? In the giant ice bear fridge. I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offsite copy from the ice bear. We put, we put a body in there, though. I don't think there was anything in there. But you've been to the fridge, and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... Uh, I found it from ice bear fridge, but... Uh, I don't know if it's for it. But they all say copy moved to a safer place. She freezes. Wait, a note from whom? Did they specify where they took the filament to copy memory? But they all say copy but take to a nearby ice ma cream maker. And it was signed by someone named Suwaswa. Zawiswa, of course. She relaxes. Our project leader led lead, Suwiswa Zawiza. God, he was so hell bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. And feature creep. She mutters. In the valley of heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offsite copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. She crosses her arms defiantly. And the heads. It won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. She stops. Go find the copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Uh, by the, by the way, we put a dead body in that fridge. Wait, what? She looks up alarm. Who's dead body? You know, we don't actually have to tell the entire world about the fridge. Lieutenant says, looking at you. Whose body is it? She demands, staring at you first, then looks at the lieutenant. Don't worry, I put it there temporarily. It's all part of an official police investigation. You put it there. She leans back, massaging her eyelids. You put the dead body inside the ice bear fridge. And I just wanted to let you know. Okay, she says, pressing her fingers in her eyebrow ridge. Very cool. Thank you for keeping me in the loop. We would appreciate if you kept this knowledge to yourself, miss. Who would I tell? My mother? She freaks her frizzy head. I don't have anyone to tell. And if I did, I wouldn't. I don't care. Oh my lord. Uh, I found an ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. Oh yeah, it was. I remember this now. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. There's a solution, but she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. Why can't you just go get it? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Wait. Are you a part of the curse? Of course not. She crosses her arms. Anyway, I don't have my keys anymore, and she won't let me in. Why does she think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinet, and people from Martinet have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. Yeah, people in Martinet don't really like it with time, because they're biased. What if it does emit elemental evil? It doesn't emit, it receives. She stopped explaining. She sounds just like her. She starts praying when she heard, first saw my rem. Tuned to higher powers. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. Alright, I'll look for y'all side copy. Thanks. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind the radio camera and hands it looks like an oversized pry bar. Here is my Kavalsund multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. You get me the offsite copy, then you get the Kavalsund. Oh! Neat. It hurts a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kavalsund. Huh. So it's an upgraded chain cutters. Or I guess it's an upgraded pry bar and chain cutters, I'm assuming. I can't actually tell. Oh.
<sighs> I wonder if we can make it back to the, uh... It is really late. bad about having uh, Kim not be with us for last time for last time for the last day so let's keep him as long as we can I don't think there was anything we needed uh, to do without Kim right where are you going Kim Hopefully we're not waking anyone up with our sick-ass grooves coming from our radio. Friend. Wow, that is thing is ginormous. Oh. Uh, let's turn it off first. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a big gap in, uh, sounds like someone else. Too bad. I am the law. I am the apocalypse. And I am a superstar. Yeah, uh, this is gonna be tough. And this looks like this is gonna be for, this looks like to be the, like, only way to get this quest done, so we're probably just gonna do this quick. Wow. Look, I'm not cursing you this time, so don't look at me. How can I look at you? You're just text on a Twitch, on a, on a Streamlabs. How can I look at you? Oh, this is gonna probably be a while. Alright, that's that's a drink finished. There we go. Ice groans and howls under strain of your trying false and multi-tool. Until the lid cracks open. Darkness lies inside. You can faintly make out an object, intricate and foreign, left there for sub zero beauty to sleep. Fulfilling memories with the words offsite copy written on its side. So the point washes over you as you stare into the almost empty, now almost empty ice cream maker. What? No ice cream? A scoop of ice cream would have been nice, yes. Lieutenant agrees. Someone's stomach growls. The room feels very cold. A fulfillment memory. You don't lift the cue of its frostbite and careful not to damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lukeman as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperatures. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on a precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs. Hmm. I'll take that as a hint. It looks like we're, uh, carrying... I don't know the name of the weapon, or the name of the character. Actually, no, I think his name was, uh, Soul... No, was it Soul Bad Guy? Was it Soul Bad Guy? I'm trying to think of the, uh, the game. 
It looks like the weapon he uses, that uh, soul bad guy uses. I forget what the name of his game series is. Spirit comes alive, blah, blah, blah. Guilty Gear, thank you. Uh, please repeat, is this the offside copy? I have myself that. Afterlife, death. No, that's not it. Afterlife, death. Good. I've unlocked the offside copy. After ending the call, please press print to access fulfillment. Ka ching. That's all for now. Press print. Alright. Read the printout. Paper is soaked with ink. It's monochrome darkness spinning from Martian Marvin. It's not possible to make out any information. What happened? It's just covered in ink. Ah, uh, Lieutenant joins his finger over the ink-soaked paper, staining his fingertips. Something is obviously bro broken. See, I'm gonna print out again. Hell yeah! A single speck of white shines out from the shade. For some reason, the printer decides to spare us one tiny dot of paper. This must be the information Tuna is looking for. She knows how to make sense of it. Turn off the printout. Remove offsite copy, production schedule, play. Awesome. Really? She used the same password? Lieutenant seems almost disappointed to discover that. As he murmurs, maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. We can finally unlock this stuff. Read the printout. Project report written by the lead protester and Andrew Andy Scott about We're All Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Axman. First, first, the first few pages give an overview of the capital and workplace, while the rest of it seems to be production schedule. Uh, I want to know about Monday. Eh, it's a short time of, ex of existence. Fortress Axman SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed final advancing brought in 150,000 real, but then came the delays. Eventually the damage reached 400,000 real, with only half of the game finished. 400 real? Joe Maya Joe. I don't know what the fuck that word is. These guys knew how to party. Gosh, where'd they get all this money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Ignatian investor. Uh, let's do the production schedule. The production schedule depicts their glorious descent into bankruptcy. Right, what happened? It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a 4 million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. I could have bridged the gap. No, you couldn't have. What do you mean? I totally could have. Definitely not. Not a chance. Even then... The success remained with an ever-narrowing ever margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of Heads. The what? At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Zimsborn Zuisla Zawiza, desired that what World and Tether needed was a secret myth mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. The place was to be the Valley of Heads, where the heads of all the headless... Oh my god. All the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. This sounds awful and extremely expensive. This is some insane shit. Who are these people? The world had never seen their, seen their kind before, and might never again. How many heads were there? So many. I'll ask you if there were approximately 10,000 head, heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. How many combinations can you make out of that? Do you really want to know? There seems to be a calculation here, but it uh, takes a while. Yeah, how bad could it be? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh my. Okay, okay. Major, major props to the person who went through and did all all the math for this. I seriously want to put that out there. Major props to the person who did the math on this. 
<laughs> what a wall of numbers! Oh god, it's... <laughs> it's still going! Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> Oh my god! What the shit? <laughs> oh my god! Lieutenant taps his foot impatiently. His arms folded tight against his chest. He's dying for a cigarette. Come to think of it, you are too. <laughs> Holy shit! What have I done? <laughs> what the? What is happening? Oh my god. <laughs> the numbers. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? <laughs> what if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Just let the numbers wash over you. Oh my god. Dude, oh, oh that's a lot of zeros. And that's it. Okay. So that's what did them in? Well, yeah. That and the catastrophic data loss. <laughs> the what now? On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes in at the very end, where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness, before their incognition investor pulled the plug. Oh my god. Is nobody gonna discuss what just happened? <laughs> Hey, not only caused all that data to get lost in the air. When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Intel, the service provider. But despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. What? They lost the whole game and one couldn't even pay for it? Always read the terms of service. Let's face it, they didn't have any money left for legal action. Wasn't there a copy of the game? A backup? Seriously enough, it seems the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy, and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What does it say? S. Lukanen killed. The lead programmer forged Saxon. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me, after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement, in the iceberg refrigerator, near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. Not very convincing, is it? Your former colleague would agree with you. Is there anything else from this lead programmer? Uh, it's in your notes, can be added elsewhere. What was the workforce? Fortress accident employed 18 people. We are actually reading all this, by the way. Uh, the bulk of the team composed of the writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overbearing producer who developed the habit of popping higher holiday in the basement to escape his obligations. But on the other hand, their obligations were piling up at an inhuman rate, a rate that could only be amended by higher holiday. Why did Fortress Axon have so many concept artists? Wait, why did a radio game need so many artists? It didn't. It didn't need so many archons started? It didn't need any. No, definitely not. A few more producers would have come in handy, though. Especially when dealing with writers. Some of whom routinely skip work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. Oh, I know that feeling all too well. Uh, read notes if you want. Four months later, by an unknown author, I'm the only one left, and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under, too. Slipstream to switch to making skis, and hairdressers just left. Cursing Martinet. They're right, though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinet. All of it. Still, I haven't gotten an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the Insulindian front on that day. Since the computations happened on air, I reckon it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates on a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is St. Grun 1147. I'm going to look into this thing in the eye. Uh, that's definitely the church. Hmm. Well, at least we know a little more about this game. And it was how much of a failure it was. We could just sell this. We could totally just be a dick and sell this, sell this item.
wonder. We need the money for lamps. Uh, first off, what happens if I go through the bookstore? Let's get our stats up. Uh, thought that maybe something new would happen. Alright, I think we're gonna go head back, give this to her, and then we're gonna call it a night. Both literally in game and, uh,. Actually, I might just call it a night period for uh, the stream, because uh, my stomach's starting to get a little upset, and I'm going to probably go take probably some Pepto-Bismol and then go to bed. Actually, that's not true. i got to edit and render a video. Edit and render some more Coliseum parts. Really wishing there was fast travel, though. still up. Me. That might have been nice. At least time doesn't travel while passing. Or well, time wasn't passable traveling. Yeah, that would have sucked if, like, we were having minutes go on every couple of seconds of us just wandering around. Yes, what is it? Uh, by the offside copy you asked me to bring. This is the filament you're looking for? Show our production schedule. No, that's the production schedule. You stole an access without authorization. To stopping the table on the battery, you can see all the patients. I don't need it. In his defense, it was simply lying on the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still. Thanks. She takes the filament and spats in metal tablet tab on its side. Looks like it's the one. What's gonna happen now? Now I'm going to print out what's left of it. It's already inserted film into the radio computer core. Where are you close the door? Don't waste your time printing it out. There's nothing but a speck of white in a sea of ink. It's broken. A speck of white? She sounds excited. As the filament clicks into place, that's exactly what I've been hoping to find. What do you mean? Nintendo was able to define the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. I want to repeat your calculations, only this time with better equipment. Watch. She prints on the machine's keyboard. What an intricate display of failure. The paper gets soaked in ink again. Devo blackness shining into light of the mainframe. It looks eerie. 
It's the abyss staring back at you. Now what? Tudor doesn't reply. Her hands are running over the printout. She's looking for something. For her morning star. Eye scouring the millimeters. Here, she suddenly says, raising her ink-stained fingertips. I found it. It's that white dot. It's the same place I saw it when I printed it out. Hold on. She She's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps, and the light inside starts pulsing like a glowing heart. Say nothing. Just give me a second. I'm almost... Lieutenant Lee's poster whisper. I've never witnessed a programmer work before. Done! Suna jumps up from the keyboard like a spring. I've got it! I found the location of the anomaly. There's joy in her voice as she bumps her fists into the air. You did it? Uh... Oh my god, congratulations! Thank you! She yells back with a grin. Time for a celebratory drink, perhaps. Just the thought. So, where is it? Where is your two millimeter hole in the wall? Hole in the world. There. She puts the under in the church where a group of water bowls form which with their arcs. In the swallow. Think you can help me? She tilts her head, spark eyes sparkling. Sure. I need you to go move those water bowls for me. I need to double check my calculations. What an interesting proposition. Truly a task for the intellectuals. Solving the puzzle of the water bowls. Right, I'll go figure it out. I'm good at intellectual puzzles. Figure it out? No, I don't need you to figure anything out. I got a computer for that. She pats the mate frame. Just walk to the, over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third ball two centimeters to the left, and the fourth ball five centimeters to the right. That should do the trick. What? She only wants you to follow instructions? Nothing intellectually stimulating in this task. A child could do it. Sure, no problem. Thanks, she smiles. Uh, fine, we'll do this. And then we'll call it a night. I thought that was all we needed to do. Uh, it's obviously on again as if someone turned off the entire world outside the walls, or inside bowls down still. Measurements have been marked down, plus memory, short memory, centimeter floor, centimeters to life. It looks like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. The task is an insult to your mental skills. And move the bowl. Water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. The lead, lead programmer sends you encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. Oh, I thought we could maybe move it some more. That would have been pretty funny. I have moved the bowls. Yes. It was what mind it? numbingly easy. What's next? Great. Everything should be aligned now. She stops, moving right here into her chapel. This know it all is hesitating. Alright, let's get this pu uh, What's wrong? Yeah, she snaps out of the lull. Nothing. Now the only thing left to do is unmute the headphones. If we've got the location right, then we should be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Wait, why'd you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Honestly, I'm a little scared. Is it going to just be silence and nothing else? I don't know. She stares at the heart of the computer. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, what does sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the main thing showing shadows on her chin. What if silence is only what surrounds it? But the swallow itself is... She grows silent, her face very pale in the cold light of electricity. Right. We should be cautious. We don't know what we're dealing with here. Maybe. She rubs her face. Maybe I'm just tired. Let's think about this, logically. Why would nothing be terrifying if it's, well, nothing? Hmm. Hey, I don't think I want to do it anymore. Seems too dangerous. So I start to back off. No. She breathes in determined. We have to do it. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press on mute on the keyboard. The lieutenant takes a step back. And then nothing. Nothing happens to can press on mute. Nothing but silence. Say nothing. She doesn't talk. Her eyes closed and brown brows knitted together in a seat of deep focus. One hand cupping the headphone. Well, damn it! She lets out a loud sigh before tearing off her headphones. She's still avoiding her gaze. Well, at least the world still seems alright. Yeah, yeah. 
He says, disappointed. Nothing happened. Let's move on. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean, nothing happened? Did you find a swallow? No. He rests her hand on her, her face on her hands, massaging her forehead. No, my hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this... She raises her head, staring at all the machines that litter the church. Cables coiling up the floor like pests. This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes up. Silence is silence? You're sure there's more to that. Are you kidding me right now? Game. Hold up. Are you serious? Are, are we being like dead serious right now? I'm trying to see if I have anything for this. This is actually happening right now. This game is joking with me at this point. <sighs> lovely. Absolutely lovely. There's one. We have one thing that helps us here better. Yes, what is it? All you hear is your own breathing. Heavy and hoarse from all the nights spent drinking. It's the breath of an old man. Or there's something else. There has to be. Something big, something unexpected. Something new yet to be discovered. Ghosts, speak to me! Well, soon I ask as soon as you take out the headphones. Did you hear nothing? I'm not sure. There seems to be something there, but I couldn't really make it out. Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything there. Her voice is bitter with disappointment. The lieutenant looks down the floor, as if to say you're wasting time here. God. Oh my god, we're about to do this, guys. Oh my god. I can't believe this is how I'm ending the night. This is on a stupid 8% check. Yes, what is it? Oh, this is gonna be the worst way to end the uh, end a stream is on a fucking 8%. Oh, I can already tell I'm gonna want to go to bed right after this. Yes. What is it? Oh my god, we got it. <laughs> Whatever, I'm fine with it. It makes this go by a lot easier. Everything disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. Yes, but I can I hear anything. It feels like flying on an aerostatic. Oh, when your ears pop. Oh, when a subtle difference in the atmosphere. A weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear? Suna, take off the headphones. What if we need just a better sound system? A better sound system, she repeats. All right, but where would we get one? It's only a rhythmic beat permeates the halls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crum crumble onto the floor, wooden floor. They really should allocate some reservation funds to this place, murmurs the lieutenant, inspecting the damage done to the Arbex. No. What they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing neighborhood peace. Yeah, but they could help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes if more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course, the speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. And you think they would help me? They would, if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Great, I'll go talk to them. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I know I managed to a large quantity of drugs. I see you've talked to them. Good. Drugs are illegal. I am not leaving the church. Especially because of some corrupt drug out idea you cooked up in that tent. Wonderful. Now this place is going to be a drug lab. Always something fascinating happening in tents. Wait, no, 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 no. You can't say things like that when the lieutenant is present. Say it's a joke. Say nothing. No, don't mind me. Go on with your little project. I'm sure you can spend it as an undercover cop cover up. Many cops do. Oh 
my god. I can't believe I just did that. I'm so glad we became best friends with Kim on the first day, because that would have been really bad. I think we've done enough friendly things with Kim, I think, to, uh, to uh, make things not as bad. Also, oh my god, we still have a ways to go about this stupid, about this damn quest. Okay, now, I'm calling it here. It's almost 11, and I'm getting really tired. Uh, I'm not going to end the day in-game. Uh, but uh, I'm going to call it here for a stream, and we'll continue this next week. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, next week we'll find out what that strange sound was. And that's pretty much it, probably. And then we'll probably move on to day four, assuming that's all that's left. But uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. Because I am going to go edit and render some stuff and go to bed. Till then, till then.